In November of last year, popular British reality TV show I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here brought on the controversial Jamie Lynn Spears, the sister of pop princess Britney Spears. I know, I was confused too, until I realized they probably measure celebrity status using the metric system over there. So I did the math, worked out the conversion rate, and somebody appearing on even just one single episode of Britain's cheekiest home videotapes in 1997 is roughly equivalent to winning a Nobel Peace Prize here in the United States. So Jamie Lynn rounding out a cast of celebrities is not as far-fetched when you add in that cultural context. What feels more universally obvious, however, is Jamie Lynn's motive for participating in the show, which puts a group of public figures into a remote location to learn survival skills and complete physical challenges. This is all part of Jamie's PR tour to rehabilitate her public image, which has undergone some rough times in the last few years. She's faced heightened scrutiny for her alleged involvement in the conservatorship that Britney Spears was trapped in from 2008 to 2021. After Britney gave the shocking courtroom testimony that her younger sister was set to financially benefit from this forced conservatorship along with other members of her immediate family and management team. Since then, Jamie Lynn has seemingly attempted to cash in on this increased media attention by publishing a salacious tell-all book about her sister, followed by a slew of short-lived gigs on reality TV. TV shows like Dancing with the Stars and something called Special Forces, both of which she was either eliminated from or abruptly quit, citing a mysterious health condition, the mystery being whether or not it actually exists. Nothing if not consistent, Jamie Lynn's time on I'm a Celebrity follows a similar pattern, when she unceremoniously left the show after just 11 days in the Australian jungle, which sparked a firestorm of discussion from the press and speculation on British social media, which is just like American social media, except better regulated to prevent misinformation from influencing the festering hordes of uneducated voters who secretly still share the same beliefs as their racist grandparents. So if not for medical reasons, why did Jamie Lynn leave the show? And just as she was starting to win over audiences overseas. I guess they love a crybaby over there. Well, there is plenty of evidence to support one shady theory. So get out your magnifying glass and put on your Sherlock Holmes hat to investigate a case of corruption, suspicion, and some truly hard to understand acts accents from both sides of the pond in today's Case of the Missing C-List Celebrity installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content found here on the web. And we break it down like the Nepo baby sibling who can't hold down a job to look at each individual clip and determine if this was worthy of its position based on its own merit and if it has a freestanding career or if it's just someone who borrowed her sister's age and that should be enough for her. We'll find out today when we look at I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, specifically Jamie Lynn Spears' run on the show. I'm always conflicted about talking about Jamie Lynn because I hate to seem like I'm just jumping on the hate train that seems to railroad her a little bit more than other members of the Spears family who might deserve it more. Then again, she's the one who insists on having a career in the public eye. And the whole issue of this abusive conservatorship that Britney Spears is now free from, hopefully, without any undue influence beyond that, I think there needs to be a lot of reform in the United States about the conservatorship law. And if somebody who is world famous like Britney Spears, who went like over a decade in the public eye while still suffering under this abuse, then there must be normal everyday people on the planet or in the country who are also suffering at the hands of these unfair laws. And for that reason, we need to reform. We need to talk about the issue and hopefully prevent this kind of thing from happening to anybody of any celebrity status or not going forward. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. Sometimes I'm going to be better about it in 2024. It's a resolution. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. Turn on notifications. I've got merch and a Patreon. Today's video is sponsored by Rocket Money. I'll tell you more about that later. So I don't know if there's a difference in like understanding between the UK and the US about Jamie Lynn and how much 
she, according to Britney, abused her sister under this conservatorship. Apparently at one point, Britney even texted Jamie Lynn to be like, I, you need to help get me out of this treatment center when she was in Hawaii. And Jamie Lynn was like, there's nothing you can do about it. So just live with it. And beyond that, it seems like there's plenty of reason to speculate from Jamie Lynn's book and then Britney's book. I mean, it's a troubled relationship, obviously, but also that Jamie Lynn had something to gain from allowing the conservatorship to continue. At one point, even being named like the head of the estate, essentially, I'm not sure what the actual term is, but before it was switched over to a more anonymous trust, we saw that Jamie Lynn was meant to inherit all of Britney's fortune in the event of Britney's death. And in Britney's own book, she says very explicitly, like, I believe their plan was to kill me. So whether or not that is like factually true for that type of abuse to be happening to somebody where they feel that way and truly believe it and are not helped by their loved ones is very problematic. Like then your intentions aren't pure because you were not getting your daughter the help they need or your sister the help that they need. And even in Jamie Lynn's book, she's very much gaslighting in her attitude towards Britney being like her behavior was so delusional. She was having episodes, all of these things implying that there was some sort of long-term mental health issue that was causing her to feel like she was being oppressed and the US court of law determined like, no, she's okay to handle her own business and her own money. So I don't think that the, all of the criticism of Jamie Lynn is undue. And again, no one else from the Spears family is trying to pursue like a career being an actress slash singer. So naturally that's gonna draw the ire of many of the fans of Britney and people from the hashtag free Britney movement. And I'm one of those people. So we're gonna roast and toast this bitch tonight. It's hard to appreciate all of these celebrity TV show appearances. She's like almost jumping on every reality show that invites her for a paycheck. And I mean, I would argue that her book she released called Things I Should Have Said was also like taking advantage of the increased media attention that Britney was getting during her court testimony. And Jamie Lynn never directly addresses any of the things that Britney accused her of in court during the course of that book. So it just leaves a lot more questions. And it's not like Jamie Lynn tries to separate herself from the whole controversy. The whole reason she's on these shows is because she's Britney's sister and everyone else on the show knows it to the point where she only has that to talk about. No, she's a good big sister, she is. So families fight. Me and her both have had a very complicated upbringing. I've been the one person in her life and she can say this, I've never taken anything from her. I didn't take that millions of dollars from her bank account. I was entitled to it because my daddy said I was a good girl and I was given her condo in Florida because somebody had to look after it while she was stuck in brain jail for having a case of the dark and gloomies. And it's not my fault that she lost over a decade of personal freedom and bodily autonomy. But to be fair, she wasn't using any of that to benefit me anyway, so who cares? So no, I've never taken anything from my sister, not even a desperate phone call when she was begging for help after being involuntarily institutionalized. And certainly not her singing advice on how to perform a song in a commercially marketable vocal range. Stronger than yesterday. People tell me that I have a more mature voice than normal 10 year olds. Oh yeah, that's a very mature sounding voice, like an end of life Johnny Cash. She said, scoot over Britney, cause I'm the next pop diva. I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. Like, oof, adorable. Like I said earlier in the year, Jamie Lynn had appeared on a show called Special Ops where people had to like, like perform these military exercises and live in harsh conditions. Like for example, they weren't like in a hotel, they were living outdoors. And she quit after I think three or four episodes because she could no longer take the harsh conditions under which she was being held and agreed to and everyone warned her about. And then it's like the same exact thing, but just in Australia, when it comes to I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Safe to say, Jamie Lynn, for somebody who wanted to come onto TV and prove to her audience that she wasn't worthy of being demonized by the press, she certainly has a hard time keeping it together in a way that feels likable. I don't know what I, I don't know Look what's wrong shit. with me. I, I do not want to be here. You are no, no, cute, right? Oh my God, it's so bad. <laughs> this is not okay. <laughs> I mean, it was, That's it, so unfair. Aw, oh, sweetie, we all hate when you cry like this. For me, it's those sniffly, snivelly mucus sounds that are particularly annoying. So why don't you take that sh 
out into the deep jungle, love. Just watch out for the dart frogs and bobcats, okay, sweetheart? They don't want to hear that any more than we do. I'm just kidding, okay? I'm not heartless. It's not easy being out in the jungle without any modern luxuries. But still, perhaps you have a torn sock or a pair of used panties you can blow your nose into. Everybody, take out your used underwear. We're gonna give it to Jamie to bury her face into because nobody gets voted off on this show, turns out. And you're like really good at escaping from all of those giant spider webs we keep pushing you into. I guess we underestimated how oily your skin would be. Slippery James. That's your new nickname, by the way. Slippery James, the wet and slimy rodent. I don't doubt that there wasn't a fair amount of hard work put into this. Was that hard work wasted on a bad result? All I'll say is those are hours that they will never get back. And time is far too precious. I hate wasting time. I don't even like wasting time like emailing people or being on the phone with people, which is why it drives me crazy when that's the hoop I have to jump through to cancel like a random subscription that I find on my bank account. That's why I'm so grateful for the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is the app you need to save and manage your money better, which is definitely a New Year's resolution of mine. I looked at my checking account the other day and I was like, Ugh, that's not the number I was expecting to see. The holidays hit hard. And I knew that I had these errant subscriptions and fees in there that I could have done without, but I'm just too lazy to go in and go through all the effort of canceling things. I'm also pretty avoidant when it comes to the truth. So I was too afraid to tally up all of the totals I have from food delivery apps apps and seeing just how much damage that was doing. So I just stayed blind. I was in the dark, but Rocket Money totally stepped in to save the day. And 2024 is looking like it's gonna have a much brighter financial future. I use Rocket Money to safely and securely identify recurring charges that are hitting my bank account. And I don't have to call customer service or write a from scratch email, like some sort of hooligan to have it canceled. I can cancel right within the app. It literally took just a couple taps and I was done paying for this particular dating service that I gave up on. Well, I gave up on myself. The service was no longer necessary. Rocket Money has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Sorry, subscription-based sales models, you're going down. If you're not offering value, you're off the roster. And when it comes to those food delivery habits of mine, I love using Rocket Money to analyze my spending habits and Rocket Money creates a custom budget for me. I can automatically monitor my spending by category and get notifications when I've exceeded my limit. So it's like, okay, I guess I'll cook for myself today. And I start like opening a box of cereal. Oh, bonus, you can lower your bills. Like all it takes is someone negotiating on your behalf. Like Rocket Money will do that for you. I didn't know you could even negotiate your bill. I got way less money for my internet bill. And it's like, all this time I could have just asked to pay less. Well, I couldn't have because again, I'm pretty avoidant. But Rocket Money, they're the experts at talking down your bills. Give it a shot. If you have the resolution to save money in 2024, like I do, then I really encourage you to check out Rocket Money. You've got a free trial there. Use the link in my description and they'll hook you up. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Visit rocketmoney.com slash nickderamio or click the link in my description to get started for free. Thanks Rocket Money, you're saving my wallet. Not the wallet, but the stuff inside of it. And not literally inside of it. It's like numbers on a screen representing gold in a bank somewhere, I assume, I don't know. To give credit where it's due, the cast of I'm a Celebrity is super nice to Jamie. They're nice to all of each other. Like there's not a lot of drama in this show, which is further baffling as to why it's so popular over there. First of all, the show airs every day. They're like one episode a day live for like 20 or so days, like following these celebrities in the jungle. I would not make it, not only not in the jungle participating, but watching it at home. I'd be like, this is so boring and it is. But you know, I scrubbed through enough episodes looking for Jamie Lynn that I could see how friendly everyone was and they're all super understanding of Jamie Lynn being like oh we feel for her anyone could be like this she's missing her kids and she's in a different country it's like you're all in a different country this is Australia and you're British I also don't know a single celebrity on the cast it's like we're using that term real loosely here I think in the past Caitlyn Jenner was on the show it's all BDC and below lists celebrities I don't know any of them Nella seems to be a youtuber that's great but they're all like at first not even asking Jamie too much about her family or the her connection to the celebrity world at all. And the first episode, she doesn't say anything about it. They're even like, you come from a musical family, right? And she's like, well, my mom played the piano. It's like, you know, that's not what the f 
I'm talking about, girl. Who's your sister? Give me your phone number so I can text her. I'm just kidding. She doesn't have Brittany's phone number, but she pretends like she does. She purports to have like a very strong relationship with Brittany still. Once she does start speaking up about that in like the third episode and she starts telling stories and you can see everybody like salivating being like, oh, the reason you're here is happening. Well, you want to hear about something really embarrassing that happened one night? Because this involves my sister. So she was up for her first Grammy and she lost. Christina was wonderfully talented. But that year, I mean, come on, Brittany was like, Brittany was Brittany. it. Brittany yeah, it's Brittany, bitch. Like always. She said, it's Brittany, bitch, like always. And it's never my equally iconic catchphrase. It's Jamie Lynn, you holes. Also, wait, I think I missed how that story had anything to do with you, Jamie Lynn. When does the embarrassing part happen? Is it years later when your entire public identity depends on having a more famous sister so that you can keep going on whatever reality show is offering to pay you to force in as many anecdotes about that relationship as humanly possible? Now that you can no longer profit off of the abusive conservatorship that you and your family have kept her imprisoned in for decades? Is that what the embarrassing part was? You let me know. You let me know, Jamie. As I said, in episode one, this woman flat out refused to even acknowledge that she had a sister named Britney Spears because she was her own person and a well-known actress in her own right. But I guess by her third day of being boring, survival instincts kicked in because someone was like, isn't it so embarrassing when you have like lettuce stuck in your teeth? And 40 yards across the campsite, Jamie Lynn jumps out of the outhouse being like, did y'all know my sister went to the Grammys once? That's just, isn't that embarrassing and interesting? Like girl, this is your second reality show of the year where you had to use a dirt whole as a toilet. Isn't that enough for you? Haven't you gone to enough lengths to garner attention? Be real. You see interviews with the other cast being like, we don't ask her about Jamie, her sister, but she offers up the information and we're like, ah, la, 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 la. we love it. It's like, yeah, we know. Oh, and Sam, that cast member with the blonde hair, he's like, do you think she's going to watch the show and see us on it and follow me on Instagram? It's like, no, no, and no. But she's like, no, she'll watch and be nervous about me. She'll be like, well, are you really doing it? It gives fake relationship. It gives like, she's aware of what you're doing, but she's hearing it through a third party. Like, I doubt they're like, hey, sis, I'm going on this show. Oh, good luck. It's just not ringing true to me, especially since Britney Spears wished Jamie well in her book, but she did not say like they have a current relationship relationship she said she called her a total b even for when they were children and said I wish her the best that to me is like okay good riddance but not like call me later and tell me your work plans like no and the only screen time Jamie manages to get in her time on the show if not for uh, like some anecdotes about Brittany or her childhood it's just her sniveling and wanting to go home and missing her babies which like I get it missing your kids is probably tough but it starts really early on this show is shooting for 17 days she made it 11 but the the drama starts at day three this is not fair I quit. I don't cry wolf. I mean it every time I want to leave. I think I've got to leave. I think I gotta leave. Like I just want to see my kids. That's it. I want to go home. It's day three, babes. No, it's Jamie Lynn, you holes. She was pretty clear about her new catchphrase. Don't worry, it's gonna stick once she incorporates it into her next horrible song. Streaming soon over the loudspeakers at a Kmart location in Nashville. I do kind of like, it's day three, babe, as a tagline. So I don't know, Jamie, maybe keep that one in your back pocket. It's still not as good as my playfully on-brand intro line. It's another infected skin lesion, doctor. And that's registered with the US trademark office. So don't try and steal that. I'm serious. You do not know who you're messing with, okay? Okay. It's another infected skin lesion, doctor. I'm not saying I would love roughing it in the jungle for 17 days, and I would probably think about going home too, but JL needs to understand the same lesson that I learned both in rehab and while camping in the woods with my Boy Scout troop, which is that you don't get much sympathy for crying over something that the whole rest of the group also has to do, and it's better to carry out your sob sessions privately while visiting the dirt hole that you're being forced to it wasn't a great rehab center and also not recognized by my insurance as a medical facility. In fact, as far as they could tell, I had just spent the previous 90 days at a mental hospital that had been abandoned since the 1950s. Hm. I probably should have known when my intake nurse was just a hermit living inside of a cabin warning me to turn around. But I was kind of wasted at the time, so I was like, yeah, nurse creaky, I'm gonna turn my whole life around, just wait. Jamie complaining about wanting to leave at three days in, maybe it wouldn't be so harped on if it weren't for the context. First of all, she wouldn't be the first one to quit the show after just a few days. I believe Caitlyn Jenner did. And in her own season, just like at, after episode two, Grace Dent, I think from Master Chef, she quit citing medical grounds also. And I think they count like mental health as medical grounds in these reality shows in the UK because they're much more careful about like not traumatizing someone mentally for the sake of television. Love that. But it basically means you can get out of a show for free by being like really sad about it. Anyway, Grace Dent was the first to go 
And also producers have through sources kind of leaked that like they thought Jamie was a flight risk as soon as Grace left because that's when Jamie started talking about it and she knew she would like wouldn't be the first to go. So they were afraid of her leaving when she was already being a pretty good ratings draw by talking about Britney Spears. In addition to that, Jamie Lynn had been on Dancing with the Stars, as I mentioned prior to this, kicked off I think week four or something very early on. But shortly after leaving the show due to medical grounds and then being like, I'm recovering y'all, she ended up attending the live taping of Dancing with the Stars and people online were speculating she left the show to go to Dancing with the Stars and also she waited until when she did because other shows have set the precedent through the press letting us know that like Emma from the Spice Girls, she quit after a couple days, but press let us know she was still entitled to her full fee because the contract state, if you make it through 72 hours, you get your paid. So with that being the precedent, people are like, oh, well clearly Jamie Lynn got paid her $250,000 check for this show after the two days and she was planning to leave the whole time, which is also supported by the pre-show teaser interview where she's like, I don't know how anyone makes it through this whole thing. Hats off to them because I could never. It's like, she basically says like, I don't plan on making it through this whole thing. Allegedly. I mean, that's not proven, but you know how the internet is. They're going to take that info and make it fact. So I'm also inclined to believe that like, yeah, somewhere in her consciousness, she was like, oh, I'm going to back out as soon as it's too much, which she did. I mean, she made it longer than most people expected at 11 days, but I think she was also nervous because the public votes in this show and they were more kind to her than suspiciously they were to the castmates of color. She thought she was going to get voted to be in those challenges every week. Basically, they have to go to a misery motel and like do fear factor style shit where like entrails are being thrown on them. They have to drink slurries of guts and bugs crawling all over. But she, as far as I saw, was only in one of them or two of the challenges and she did pretty well in each of them. But yeah, she was not excited about that. If you can imagine, she didn't like sleeping on a hammock. She's not gonna like getting bugs thrown in her weave. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. This is it. Honestly, it's just climb, but expect them to throw for you. Later. That's the same advice that producers gave her before taking the stage at Radio Disney's Willing to Show Up Awards, where she took home a trophy for fastest and most enthusiastic RSVP. To be honest, I think it's kind of tacky, A, that the show even wanted to bring Jamie Lynn on, although I know they're just in the business of getting ratings, but also the way that they bring up Britney Spears through like the show's production, like the actual hosts making references to Hit Me Baby One More Time and uh, Jamie Lynn's childhood exposure to other Mouseketeers. It's not cool to me. It's like holding that up as the main reason she's on the show. Like at least talk about Zoe 101 or some shit. I don't know. Jamie Lynn spills the tea on growing up with one half of boy band NSYNC. She's gone from rubbing shoulders with NSYNC to washing her armpits in that sink. Or you could even say that she went from being an emotionally abusive, gaslighting liar to essentially useless around a gaslit campfire. Oh, come on. That language was too strong for the target audience. I do not understand British television. One station will have like a couple of ladies baking biscuits with their full on tits out. And the next station has a highly rated competition reality show with literally pre-revolutionary war jokes for young gentlemen. They'll be like, you know, I grew up under the care of a rather amusing childminder. I guess you could say she was a hoot nanny. Oh. And that will somehow be a more viral moment than the tits out ladies baking. I'm not saying that show would be better for the public to celebrate, but I just know America and what they would choose. I just don't understand you, England. Like, is your entire population cross-stitching grandmothers? Is this what society is like with accessible health care? Living grandparents who have social leverage? Pfft. Nerds. In this country, if you're over 30 and your grandmother is still alive, there's something wrong with you. What kind of witchcraft? She should have died of a heart attack when you were still a baby. And I'm gonna make sure she does. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jamie Lynn is not completely dislikable on the show, which again is one of the reasons why it's weird that she left, but I guess she just really couldn't stand working. She even tells the story of how her oldest daughter almost drowned, but then miraculously kind of recovered from that like brain deadness, which is so sad and so scary and obviously no one wishes on anybody. But then she also is like, that's one glowing moment, I think, for her, where it's like very humanizing. And then the rest is like, she's talking about how she was kind of mean to Britney Spears throughout her, their childhood. Like she was always kind of a spoiled brat, which like, I don't know, I guess that's relatable to younger siblings like myself. But again, choose what you're going to talk about if you're going on to rehab your PR image. This is my mom and them tell me, it never mattered where we went. You always said something to make everyone uncomfortable. I think it's something I still do now. I think that shows a great deal of self-awareness. Jamie Lynn, you asshole. What? I'm not being rude. That was her stage name. It's Jamie Lynn, you asshole. 
Toes. Anyway, Jamie Lynn, you did make everybody uncomfortable during the cast interviews when you said you were best known for being an actress and a singer. I'm just not okay with co-signing that type of delusion. And yes, I saw you in your starring role on Zoe 101 as a child, but because of your line delivery, I spent the first two seasons thinking that you were just a piece of visible lighting equipment that was accidentally left in the shot. And I thought the character Zoe was the bottle of Fiji water with food coloring on your lunch tray being voiced by the celebrity chef Paula Dean immediately after oral surgery. And I'm pretty sure you meant to say aspiring singer because, well, once again. If you love me so, don't, don't let me be the last to know. Ooh, do I hear some record labels calling? Nope, it's the police. They think that there's animal abuse happening in the home because of that sound. By episode three, Jamie Lynn has had it up to here. She holds out for a couple more days, but I mean, day three, she literally has kind of lost it. She's doing things that don't even make sense. What's the number you dial before you dial somebody? I don't think it's connected to anything, Jamie. Okay, can we get the mental health coordinator on set, please? I'm worried that if there's ever a real emergency, Jamie Lynn will try to call 911 using that fake phone booth. Like, first of all, the Australian number for emergency services is 000. But more importantly, you're trying to reach them with a rented prop that was originally used in Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. It's very bizarre to me that she tries to, like, make this phone call to, like, get home. And it doesn't seem like she's in a delirious state where she actually thinks that's gonna happen. To me, it feels like a ploy to get the mental health coordinator to like sign off on her release because she's like, oh, she's not thinking clearly. She's like so distraught that she's like going to the phone and dialing nobody. Plus one, zero, 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 Britney call me home, but it just reads as fake. I'm like, she's not that good at acting that she could pull off a true mental breakdown. Not like me, who is very method about the whole thing. I will actually break down mentally and you'll have to sit there and watch it like it's a movie. That's Zoe 102, baby girl. That's the plot of Zoe 102. I'm Zoe. She's like talking to herself, speaking in tongues. Not really, but you get it. Dear God, please help me to make it. Oh, this place is where people go to have the worst days of their life. Oh, I think now she's practicing what she's gonna say after this when she attends the finale taping of Dancing with the Stars. Jamie Lynn, it's okay, no one even watches that show anymore. You can just send that piece of lighting equipment to be your stand-in. Oh, right, that was her. Okay, so Jamie Lynn, there are no more good options left for your career. Maybe just return to the campsite and lay down in this giant spider web we found for you. Somebody grab the first aid kit. We're gonna try prepping her skin with the rubbing alcohol. I think we can get her to stick this time. Oh, Slippery James. Slippery James, the wet, slimy rodent. Do you all think that Jamie Lynn had hatched this plan to get her check early and then bounce? Or was she really genuinely like excited to leave? I mean, everybody on that set was uncomfortable and a lot of them had even younger kids than she did who they wanted to see back home. But she like found every opportunity to express how she wanted to leave from episode three. It's just a little hard to understand how she didn't think that would be the case ahead of time when everyone in her life, even Britney Spears apparently warned her like, she's gonna hate this. And then a source apparently close to Britney Spears leaked that Jamie Lynn admitted she was never planning to stay that whole time. That might be fake news, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more British reality shows covered on Clip Breakdown. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. Turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I've shoved another young woman into a spider web to be devoured by Australian creatures. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for being a celebrity by British standards with me today. I will see you next time. Come <laughs>